This video will impact you after watching this video. You will be impressed by the way of studying the Holy Scriptures. The best part is the end of the video. Hello everyone, prepare to be amazed. What we're about to explore will change your entire perspective on wisdom. By the end of this Bible study, my hope is that you'll not only understand how to study the Bible more effectively, but also gain a richer, more profound relationship with the teachings of Scripture. We're focusing on Proverbs 3, 7 today, where Solomon imparts some timeless advice. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. This verse is packed with wisdom. Trusting in the Lord with all our hearts means fully relying on God's guidance and wisdom rather than our own limited human understanding. It's an invitation to surrender our judgment to God's greater knowledge and wisdom. When Solomon says, do not lean on your own understanding, he's cautioning against overconfidence in our own intellect and perspective. Our understanding is finite and often clouded by our biases and limited experiences. By acknowledging God in all our ways, we're seeking His guidance in every aspect of our lives, trusting that He will direct our paths in the best possible way. Verse 7 further emphasizes this by advising us to be not wise in your own eyes. This is a warning against pride and self-reliance. The idea of self-proclaimed wisdom, where we rely on our own judgment and intellect, is fraught with dangers. It's easy to think that we can navigate life based on our understanding, but the Bible teaches us that true wisdom comes from God. This is not to say that our thoughts and insights are worthless, but rather that they should be humbly submitted to God's higher wisdom. The example of Eve in Genesis 3 serves as a powerful illustration. Eve desired wisdom on her own terms, independent of God, and this led her to evaluate the forbidden fruit based solely on her perception. It looked appealing to her, and she deemed it good, but this decision was made in defiance of God's command. Solomon's message here is a stark reminder that we should not follow in Eve's footsteps. We should not rely solely on what appears good to us because our perspective is limited and can often be deceived. To fear the Lord is to recognize His authority, reverence His power, and understand our place in relation to Him. This fear is not about being terrified of God, but about having a profound respect and awe for His greatness. It involves acknowledging that His wisdom far surpasses ours. Turning away from evil, as advised in the text, is an act of reverence and humility. It's recognizing that we often don't see the full picture and that what might seem harmless or even good to us can lead to negative consequences if not aligned with God's will. The promise that follows is striking. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. This isn't just a spiritual metaphor. It suggests that aligning ourselves with God's wisdom brings holistic benefits, including physical well-being. When we live in harmony with God's principles, it can lead to reduced stress, better decision-making, and overall healthier living. The peace that comes from trusting in God, rather than being burdened by our own flawed understanding, can manifest in both mental and physical health. The passage then shifts to a practical application, honoring the Lord with our wealth. This is about stewardship, using our resources in a way that honors God. In ancient times, giving the first fruits was a way to show gratitude and trust in God's provision. Today, it translates to offering the best of our time, talents, and treasures. It's a call to prioritize God in every aspect of our lives, including our finances. This idea connects back to the overall theme of the passage, humility and reliance on God. When we honor God with our wealth, we acknowledge that all we have comes from Him and that He is the source of our prosperity. The promise of barns being filled with plenty symbolizes the blessings that come from living a life aligned with God's principles. 
It's not necessarily a promise of material wealth, but of abundance in what truly matters. Peace, joy, spiritual growth, and a sense of purpose. In conclusion, Proverbs 379 provides a comprehensive guide on how to approach life with a humble, God-centered mindset. It challenges us to move beyond our own understanding and to trust in God's superior wisdom. By doing so, we not only align ourselves with divine truth, but also open ourselves to the blessings that come from living according to God's will. So as we study these verses, let's commit to integrating these principles into our daily lives, seeking God's guidance in all things and honoring Him with the best of what we have. Hey everyone, what we're about to explore will truly astonish you and transform your understanding of wisdom. By the end of this Bible study, my hope is that you'll not only have a deeper insight into how to study the Bible, but also develop a richer, more profound connection with its teachings. We're focusing on Proverbs 3, 7 to 10, where Solomon imparts some timeless wisdom. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. This passage is rich with meaning. Trusting in the Lord with all our hearts means fully relying on God's guidance and wisdom instead of depending solely on our limited human understanding. Solomon warns against leaning on our own understanding, reminding us that our perspective is finite and often clouded by biases and limited experiences. By acknowledging God in all our ways, we seek His direction in every aspect of our lives, trusting that He will lead us on the right path. Verse 7 further emphasizes this by instructing us not to be wise in your own eyes. This advice is crucial because it addresses the dangers of pride and self-reliance. The concept of self-proclaimed wisdom, where we rely solely on our judgment and intellect, is fraught with pitfalls. Our understanding is limited, and without God's guidance, we can easily be led astray. The Bible teaches that true wisdom comes from a humble acknowledgement of God's superior knowledge. Eve's story in Genesis 3 serves as a poignant example. She sought wisdom on her own terms, independent of God, and this led her to evaluate the forbidden fruit based solely on its appearance. It looked appealing to her, and she deemed it good, but this decision defied God's command. Solomon's message here is a caution against following in Eve's footsteps, against trusting solely in our judgment, which can be flawed. The phrase, fear the Lord, means to hold God in reverence and awe, recognizing His authority and wisdom above our own. This reverence leads us to turn away from evil, acknowledging that our judgment can often be misguided. It's a recognition that not everything that appears good is truly good, and we must trust in God's wisdom to discern right from wrong. The passage then makes a promise. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. This promise isn't just metaphorical. It suggests that living in alignment with God's wisdom brings holistic benefits, including physical well-being. The peace that comes from trusting God, rather than being burdened by our flawed understanding, can manifest in both mental and physical health. Moving to the practical application in verse 9, Solomon instructs us to honor the Lord with our wealth and the first fruits of our produce. This instruction, though rooted in an agricultural society, carries a broader implication. It's about giving God the best of what we have, whether it be our resources, time, or efforts. Honoring God with our wealth is a way to acknowledge that everything we have comes from Him and that He is the source of our prosperity. This concept ties back to the overall message of the passage, humility and reliance on God. When we honor God with our wealth, we acknowledge that all we have comes from Him and that He is the source of our abundance. The promise of barns filled with plenty symbolizes the blessings that come from living a life aligned with God's principles. It's not necessarily a promise of material wealth, but of abundance in what truly matters. Peace, joy, spiritual growth, and a sense of purpose. In conclusion, 
Proverbs 3, 7 to 10 provides a comprehensive guide on approaching life with a humble, God-centered mindset. It challenges us to move beyond our limited understanding and to trust in God's infinite wisdom. By doing so, we align ourselves with divine truth and open ourselves to the blessings that come from living according to God's will. So, as we study these verses, let's commit to integrating these principles into our daily lives, seeking God's guidance in all things and honoring Him with the best of what we have. Thank you for joining me in this Bible study walkthrough on Proverbs 3, 7 to 10. I hope it was a blessing to you and I look forward to our next session together here at Above Approach Ministry.